another typewriter, another video. And what a typewriter this is. This Hermes Ambassador is a formidable office beast. I'm having some difficulties to get it nicely in frame without showing my tinkering mess or gas pipe. My fancy workbench slash studio is located in my garage. I won't make friends in this house by taking apart machines in the living room. Totally drifting off, back to the typewriter. That's why you're watching this video, I guess. So, the Hermes Ambassador. These machines were some of the most luxurious and tricked out manual standards that were built at the time. Hermes Ambassadors were made from 1948 all the way to 1980 based on the serial number data of the typewriter database. Several variations were made by Payard, with some design changes and eventually the seafoam green color. The very first versions had crinkle paint and round plastic keys. Those keys became square keys somewhere in 1952. This machine was built in 1956 and doesn't have a single crinkle left. The serial number can be found beneath the ribbon cover on the left side. Being office machines, they were made to be used. And boy this one was used. The paint on the top left corner of the ribbon cover is gone. And the same goes for the rest of the left corner. I'm not exactly sure what happened here. What I can tell from the keys is that long nails were allowed in the office. Despite nice posters like these warning for talent damage. And the main operator was a left shift user, judging by the difference in surface texture of the shift keys. This machine has quite a few extra buttons compared to your average typewriter. A big tap button on the left, which is replaced by a button with a lightning bolt on ambassadors with an electric motor for keyboard carriage return. This one doesn't have a motor, but the back of the shell is equipped with a hole for the power supply. Underneath that big tab button, you'll find the tab set and tab removal keys. Speaking of tabs, apart from a regular tab, this machine has a decimal tabulator. But it has a feature. Other manufacturers added dots for the thousand separators, or didn't add thousand separators. Hermes didn't add them as separate buttons, but when you look at the decimal tabulator column underneath the carriage, you can tell that thousand separators are built in. It might throw people off who aren't expecting that. On the right you have a big backspace button, and below that two sorts of margin release keys. The bottom one is your normal margin release key. When you push that one or the top one, the margin is lifted, but only for a limited number of spaces. When the line lock activates again, you can push the top one as much as you want. It won't release the margin again. The bottom one will, however. That top one has another trick up its sleeve. If you press it while you return the carriage, the carriage will stop 4 spaces before the left margin, so it doubles as an automatic indentation key, although I tend to do my indentation the other way around. All that remains to conclude the tour of the keyboard is to point out that the ambassador has a shift lock on both the left and the right side. The machine is equipped with a basket shift mechanism. Above the keyboard you have the color selector on the right and the keyboard jammer on the left. The keyboard jammer is no luxury since the gap for the tie bars is really only a tiny gap, and you'd risk inky fingers when putting them back without the jammer. The ribbon cover has a peculiar shape. You have this depressed area with three metal nibs on it to put original handwritten documents that need to be transcribed for the boss. And on the side, there is this little metal holder. I'm guessing it's for a little card with important phone numbers, or maybe for a picture of that special person in your life to brighten up your workplace. When you open the ribbon cover, you have a nice cheat sheet showing you what all the different parts of the machine are for. Inside there are two levers. The one on the left is your touch control and the one on the right is the ribbon reverse. The machine does have an automatic ribbon reverse mechanism which is activated with eyelids in the ribbon or a knot tied in the ribbon. Closing up the ribbon cover again, and slowly working my way up through the controls to the carriage, there's these two switches. These control the position of the card holders. Flip them to this position to flip them back, this position to engage them, and this position to have them push the paper closer to the platen. Although I can't really see a difference with the normal position. Finally, I've reached the carriage. On the left side you have the left platen knob. The line finder mechanism is activated by holding down the button in the platen knob. Behind it is the paper release lever and the tabulator reset lever. 
This button is the carriage release. On top of the carriage, you'll find the ratchet release, the line selector and the carriage return lever. This button right here is the left margin setting, but I'll come to that in a bit. Traveling to the right, you'll pass a paper guide and a very nice paper support. This cross system is a lot better than the single rods you have on most typewriters. I first thought these things on the back might be some sort of flimsy maintenance feet. But after consulting the manual, they are meant to be used to prevent stencils from rubbing against the back of the machine and are called stencil supports. On the right side of the carriage, there's the right platen up and the paper injector. On top of the right side of the carriage, you can set the number of lines the paper injector should, well, uh, inject, and right side carriage release. Before I get to the margin settings, no worries, I haven't forgotten about them, I also want to demonstrate how easy it is to get the platen out. You roll the platen up until the white line lines up with the white dot, flip back the card holders, pull out the inner knobs, And presto, the platen is out. To put it back in, you just need to align the red arrow on the platen with this red arrow on the left side. And push those buttons back in. Now for the margins. The manual calls them lightning margins. To set them, you need to bring your carriage up to the margin. You press the carriage release button and the margin set button at the same time and slide the carriage to where you want to set the margin. You let go of the margin set button and the margin is set. One thing to note though is that the margins don't go past the middle. It's inherent to the mechanism as you can see. The machine doesn't have quick release carriage buttons or levers, but it's only a matter of undoing a 9mm nut on the left side and the same on the right side, and you can lift the entire carriage assembly out. Another nice design feature can be found on this cover plate and the carriage. To avoid getting razor shavings into the machine, it's advised to move your carriage all the way to the left or to the right, erase what needs to be erased, wipe away those eraser shavings, and return the carriage where you need to retype to correct the mistake. Humans are lazy creatures, so that probably wasn't done all the time. And whiteout flakes will fall down into the mechanisms as well. The Payard engineers have attempted to design the ambassador in such a way that debris falling into the machine is prevented. This plate ends in a little collection channel, and the tiny brush on the carriage sweeps the channel as you use the machine. Collected debris should fall off the sides of the machine, instead of in the typewriter. The following nice feature only reveals itself when you use the machine. When you type, the tie bar goes up to the ribbon, and as soon as the escapement is triggered, it goes back a bit. This might have been done to have the tie bars fall back faster to their resting position, but it has a nice secondary effect. When you hold the key too long on most typewriters, tie bar tends to bounce back to the platen, causing the letter to be printed a second time, but slightly fainter. This phenomenon is called ghosting, and is caused by bad typing technique. You're supposed to take quick jabs at the keys and not hold them down. Now in the ambassador this doesn't happen, because of the need fallback mechanism. It's impossible to get ghosting on this typewriter, no matter how bad your typing technique is. Payard also did a nice job with regard to sound insulation. Nearly every panel has felt on it. I am pretty sure that if the platen was still fresh, the sound level would be minimal, especially in combination with the typewriter mat. There is one design decision on this machine that I am not a very big fan of. To adjust the shift alignment, you need to remove the carriage and you need to remove this plate. because the set screws are located below it. It's a bit of an oversight, 
but unavoidable when choosing for more reliability by preventing the brief falling into the machine. I got some cool extras with this machine. The first thing is a dust cover. It was a bit nasty, but even here you can see that the Payar engineers thought ahead. Almost every dust cover I have seen so far starts to come apart at the carriage return lever, because it sticks out and eventually rips through the seams. The ambassador dust cover, however, is reinforced at the carriage return lever. I also got these two boxes. They both contain cleaning materials, such as brushes and a cloth. Note the brass bristles between the nylon bristles to make it easier to clean the slugs. You don't want to use these on a painted surface. But they also had some things I hadn't seen before. In the first box I found a Hermes branded eraser. And in the second box a Hermes branded oiler. The way this works is that you dip it in your typewriter machine oil. A tiny bit of oil sticks to the rod. You touch the hinge you wish to lubricate with the tip and the tiny amount of oil is transferred. You still want to remove any excess oil with a cotton swab though. There's a weird myth out there that typewriters don't need oil. This oiler debunks that myth. Any moving part that can cause friction benefits from lubrication to mitigate wear and tear. I've been talking a long time about this machine now. Too long, but there was a lot to cover. Now it's time for some typing.
books, but no cigar. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, until next time, bye-bye.